Good morning, Revolution. <laughs> We're trying once again, and welcome to this week. Great to see everybody uh, out there virtually. Scott, um, you're coming to us uh, by phone this morning from the great city of Ithaca in the uh, great state of New York. How's it going? Uh, doing real well. Um, weather's nice uh, and outside, so um, can't complain about anything in, in my immediate surroundings. Uh, you're, you're a lucky man. You're a lucky man. Well, you shouldn't complain too much this week. It's been one hell of a week. We had uh, the decision yesterday of the Supreme Court saying that Trump is not a king. Oh my God, yeah. what a revelation. Isn't that something? Did that incur? Are you happy about that, Scott? Obviously. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy about it. It was uh, somewhat unexpected, especially that it was a, a seven to two majority. Um, and I mean, obviously, it, you know, didn't go as far as I would have liked. It, it didn't uh, make, it, uh, make his tax returns public or his financial information public. It didn't allow Congress to have access to it. But it's still a big blow. Um, big, big, what about you? big blow to, to uh, Trump and even his boys Gorsuch and uh, Kavanaugh uh, uh, voted, uh, which was, uh, I'm sure, didn't make him happy. So do you feel encouraged now? Do you feel safer today than you did yesterday with respect to the, fa the fascist-like uh, maneuvers of Trump and the extreme right danger? Or sure. how do you feel? I mean, I, I, I do feel, I mean, I do feel safer um, from I, the, the fascist threat. There, there is a, um, you know, another layer of, of resistance to it, another obstacle in its path. That said, you know, it's 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 not really the institutions that make me feel safe. I don't think the great, you know, guarantor of our our liberties and the uh, democracy and so forth is the Supreme Court or or even Congress or you know, let alone unnamed adults in the room in the in the White House. It's 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 the people. It's the movement. What we're seeing is sort of the the reverberations. I think of this incredible uprising that's that's happening. That's putting uh, everything kind of on the table, like asking us to reconsider what democracy is. What you know, how the nation what the nation is, how it should work, and, and that's, that's having broad effects. On the other hand, Trump might be more isolated, angrier, and his element might be more isolated and angrier, and that could potentially make them more dangerous, don't you think, as the, his room well, uh, maneuver is narrow? But... I mean that that's going to happen at one point or another. That's just that's the a consequence of the the heightening of the democratic struggle. Um, mm. You know, at, at one point or another, if we're going to get rid of Trump, um, he's going to, I mean, get rid of him more than just in the sense of of you know booting him out in November, but but really attacking the the kind of political apparatus that put him in power and, and you know uh, built support for him and all that. Um, and and, that, and get... that political that political apparatus continues to this day. As a matter of fact, I was reading some interesting pieces. I think I'm going to write about it that showed that the uh, effort in the spring, when they were calling out militias to liberate state capitals, that that was funded by the Koch brothers network um, and the Mercer family. Mercer family, the family that. Mm -hmm. You know, with the backers of Rebart News and uh, yeah. and uh, Steve Bannon and all, they're the ones that bought and paid for that whole movement. That yeah, you know, because their their interest is in yeah, their interest is in getting that, people back to work, keeping the profits flowing. And no matter who pays the price, and now in the South and the Southwest and Florida and Texas and California, you got hell to pay. You know, the rates of infection are just going up, 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 up. And, you know, first wave, second wave, a new uh, uh, spike. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Spike. 
spike in the, mm. it's just, I don't know, man. It's just uh, very, well, very yeah. worrisome. You know, I saw a thing saying that, uh, um, that Texas is experiencing a, a rate of new infections that makes um, full stay-at-home orders, full lockdown, basically mandatory. And yet Governor Abbott uh, says that that's impossible because it would, it would drive people into poverty. So eventually, at some point, you have to say if this uh, economic system is like literally requires people to work themselves to death, as a condition of their existence, existence and of its existence, then we have to do something different. The like more capitalism is not the solution to this. No, more socialism is the solution. Yeah. that's one of the issues. And by socialism, you know, we mean um, effort in the direction of public intervention in the economy. Public meaning government intervention in the economy uh, to provide more purchasing power for working class people so that we can survive and, and get through this crisis. And ultimately that's gonna mean creating more jobs because hey, the unemployment rate is still 20% uh, and most of those jobs aren't coming back. Uh, you see United Air, I mean, American Airlines, big layoffs, they predict 35,000 I think in, September or October, unless demand goes up uh, for plane tickets. And this is just yeah. happening all over the economy. But I want to come back to something that happened this week with respect to the economy, and that is the Dakota Pipeline decision. Scott, another big victory for uh, uh, equality, uh, for Native American uh, rights. Uh, and for the environment, no? Absolutely, um, and a victory that was that was really won um, in a at a, a, a huge cost. And the level of violence that was brought against the protesters at, at Standing Rock trying to stop this thing, the water protectors, uh, I should say, mm. uh, trying to stop that pipeline was incredible. It's like people being sprayed with water cannons in the middle of February in North Dakota, um, rubber bullets. Yeah, it was awful. But now um, the, the, the people have prevailed. Um, and it's not the only pipeline. There are a couple other pipelines that have been uh, shut down as well. So this is a, a big turn. Um, what are now your thoughts, Joe? I know some people part of today's movement. Well, you know, some people say you see it as a serious victory because they say, well, you know, you're going to lose jobs. And so jobs are central and you want to eliminate poverty. You know, they said the same thing about Amazon when they struggled in Queens. Amazon wanted to come and the people said, you got to pay a living wage, man. You got to allow union rights. And Amazon said, well, later for it, we're not coming. And so but I mean, some people will think about that, that argument. Think about that argument through the lens of the, you know, of COVID, right? Isn't that similar to arguing that oh, we you know we got to get people back to work because because they need money to survive, um, you know, regardless of how much harm it's going to do uh, to communities, to workers, to to families. I mean, have, jobs are really important, um, but buying uh, jobs which you know, I mean, I know the, peop the company that, that was building the Dakota Access Pipeline was not pushing for good, you know, union jobs. Uh, so, I don't know, when, when, you're, when you're buying jobs with the destruction of the environment and the um, increased oppression of, of Native people, that's, you know, I think we need to find solidarity, right, between these movements for indigenous people's rights and for uh, a fair fair system for the working class. It's not an either and, or. And you're right. It's not either or. It has to be both because business is going to do whatever they can get away with doing, you know? I just, I come from an experience where when you make concessions to big corporations uh, around jobs and wages and health and safety, 
uh, Youngstown, where I come from, uh, that was done. The, the union kept giving in, giving in, giving in. Company made more and more demands. If you don't do what we're going to do, we're going to shut the goddamn thing down. And they gave in and they shut the damn thing down anyway. And yep. then they wanted to re take over the plant, worker control of the plant, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. And I remember going to a, uh, a commencement ceremony at Bethany College in West Virginia. I think it's West Virginia, Pennsylvania, I forget now. And the head of U.S. Steel gave the commencement address. And he said, boys and girls, ain't no way that we're going to turn our factory over to workers so that they can compete with us. What do you think this is? We're not in the business to help you. We're in the business to make money. Hello? <laughs> you know, that's the maximum profit imperative of, of capital. So unless you continue to fight them on every single and, it, and insist they're going to do what they're going to do. And, yeah, and it's it's also that, that maximum profit imperative that, that imperative of short-sighted reasoning is is what pushes capitalism necessarily uh, necessarily into crisis over and over again it's yeah. it's just it's got to go and we are in a crisis now well it looks like the uh, uh forces that are opposed to trump are uniting um in the uh democratic front and uh, part of that is the Democratic Party. And it looks like a big chunk of the uh, Sanders supporters, I think it's 87% and 90% of the Warren supporters say they're gonna uh, support the Democratic nominee. Uh, your, your homeboy, Joe Biden. I think you grew up- I know what you're like talking about, I'm from, from Chicago. <laughs> um, you grew up like a block uh, on him, didn't you? I mean. Are you happy about that? Uh, I mean, are you Scranton is Scranton is, is two hours away from where I grew up. Um, uh, two hours, I see. I see. Well, um, um, but do, have you looked yet at the? Uh, I, obviously, that's a that's a it's an important development. Um, you know, broad unity is is necessary. There's no way of of getting around that. But we see that the extreme right is more and more isolated. Um, uh, and that's that's a good sign, but to take advantage of that, we need a united movement. But the other side of that that sometimes gets gets lost is the energy of that movement, the the ideas, the the power, um, the leadership. Right now, comes from uh, the forces uh, in the street, from you know the the reason, from the and, uh, from the fights of, of native people for uh, for their those are things that uprising is what's pushing this and, and and we have to keep focused on on that like a broad unity is not enough without or it only goes so far without um, the leadership of the the working class and the the people's movement. Well, we have a very interesting article that we just published on cpusa.org uh, detailing the thinking of the uh, Communist Party of Brazil on this issue in the fight against Bolsonaro. And by the way, mm -hmm. he's another kind of Trump figure uh, in many respects, uh, you know, attack, 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 racism, racism, sexism, yeah. sexism. Uh, I ain't wearing no mask. I ain't wearing no mask. And not a boy yeah. that caught COVID. You know, <laughs> caught now, yeah. you know, it's like these um, guys are just um, stupid, you know. Uh, and what's they your think face? about that, that, that Karen, who's president of Bolivia, uh, Janine Anya, she has COVID too. Is that right? So, you know, these, yep. these characters, you know, they ignore science at their peril. But the Bra Brazilian party has a similar approach. Uh, to our party with respect to the need of a broad multi-class coalition uh, with movement from below led by the working class to defeat the extreme right as a precondition for moving the country forward because they had a legislative coup when, when, when Dilma was overthrown. Uh, yep. 
in 2018, I believe it was. So this struggle against the extreme right is not only a domestic one, it's an international one. And the alliances that these fascist forces are trying to put together is also a international an, an international uh, alliance. Well, Scott, I think that you just about does it. Do you have anything else you want to put on the table before we go? Well, I was just going to say that you once used the the phrase "center of gravity" to describe the the role of the working class in in the broad movement, and I think that's a really good one. Um, right, the thing that um, draws uh, sections of other class forces to itself around the program of democracy and that that democracy in all its forms is the, the core interest of, of working class people. Um, so that's that's what I have. OK, well, it's not there yet. You know, you can't say that the working class is leading this effort yet. The working class no. interests are coming to the fore, particularly uh, as it is, is expressed in the uh, Black Lives Matter movement. And that's putting forward a demand of a specific section of the class who, who face special oppression, you know, racial oppression, oppression as a nationality, oppression as workers. Mm -hmm. Those are the three forms. Uh, and, and, and those demands uh, for equality against police violence against the criminalization of black people uh, again, for uh, voting rights, against voter suppression are uh, animating at least right now, the broader, uh, an important part of the broader movement. Well, we're gonna have to uh, uh, leave it there. Uh, thank everybody for showing up this morning. Check us out at cpusa.org. We got a lot of new and interesting articles number from the rank and file of the party, you know, that are up now, which is really important. We want those voices uh, uh, to be heard. Um, we got some uh, webinars coming up at the end of the month on imperialism. We want to invite everybody to uh, check that out. Uh, some of our comrades in DC are featuring uh, an interview with uh, Gerald Horn, I think uh, early next week on the uh, uh, role played by uh, black communists uh, over the course of our history, though, so that should be really uh, interesting as well. So, that have a great week. Stay cool, stay dry, stay healthy, uh, and we'll talk to everybody later. Take care. Yep. Talk to you later. Bye bye.